You're watching ABC4 News. Welcome back. A shooting in central Paris has left at least three people dead and three others injured. The suspected shooter is in custody, but at this time, investigators say they're not sure why he did it. Here's ABC's Alexis Christophorus with the details. The shooting took place in an area filled with shops and restaurants that was bustling with activity ahead of Christmas weekend. Police cordoned off a busy street in central Paris after a gunman allegedly went on a shooting rampage Friday afternoon. The city's mayor says it took place at a Kurdish cultural center and nearby businesses. A 69-year-old suspect was taken into custody and transferred to a hospital where he's reportedly in stable condition. Authorities confirm the alleged attacker was already known to police from two prior incidents. One of those incidents, an attack on a migrant camp where he slashed tents with a sword in December of last year. He had recently been released from prison. The city's mayor says they do not know the motive for these shootings. The Paris prosecutor's office says potential racist motives for today's attack will be part of the investigation. Anti-terrorism prosecutors have been in contact with investigators. France did see a string of deadly attacks by Islamic extremists in 2015 and 16 and remains on alert for terrorism-related violence. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. And Congress has officially avoided a federal government shutdown. This comes following a vote from the Senate today and the House passing a $1.7 trillion spending plan. D.C.'s Raquel Martin has more on today's vote. Because of winter storms, Speaker Pelosi says she wanted this to be an expedited vote. And she definitely got what she was asking for. Lawmakers were able to get this package across the finish line by early this afternoon, allowing lawmakers enough time to make it home for the holidays. Friday, House lawmakers passed a $1.7 trillion government funding bill. The motion is adopted. Before the vote, Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the package puts people over politics. This is truly a package for the people. The 4,000-page bill includes $858 billion in defense spending, raises the salaries of service members, and sends $45 billion to Ukraine. The package also includes billions for needs here at home, like $40 billion in disaster recovery funds. Shortly after the bill passed, President Biden praised new investments in cancer research, public safety, and health care coverage for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. We have a big bill here because we had big needs for our country. But only nine House Republicans agreed. This is a monstrosity. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, who's jockeying for the speaker's seat next year, called the bill shameful. The appropriations process has failed the American public, and there's no greater example. Once signed by the president, the government will remain funded through September of next year. An interesting note, only a fraction of lawmakers actually showed up in person to cast their vote, many of them taking advantage of a pandemic-era rule that would allow a colleague to vote on their behalf. For now in Washington, Raquel Martin, back to you guys. All right, thank you, Raquel. And the drop in temperatures that we've been seeing lately can be dangerous for animals to be outside in the freezing cold. So Best Friends Animal Society has some helpful reminders on the best way to keep your pets safe this winter. First, limit outdoor time to prevent frostbite. If your dog has a shorter coat, you may want to give them a sweater or even boots to protect their paws. After walks, wipe off their paws to remove toxic de-icers, salt, and antifreeze. The coldest Christmas in decades. A severe winter storm is causing a major pain for holiday travelers across the country. While millions of Americans are jetting off for their holiday destinations, nasty winter storms are making things extremely difficult. More than 200 million people across the U.S. are under some type of weather alert. High winds, blizzard conditions, and record-breaking cold, all causing major stress at the airports. A lot of my friends who have later flights are stuck there for now, but um, yeah, so narrowly avoided it. I was really happy to have my early flight so I could get back home. Damaging winds have also knocked out power to over a million people from Texas to New England as the temperatures plunge with bone-chilling cold stretching all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast. Weather rate certified 11 years in a row. 
And Bob, I know that makes us grateful for the kind of weather we have this weekend. Not too exciting, but it's nice to just have some calm weather. You know, sometimes boring can be exciting. <laughs> it all depends on what you do with it. At least you're not waiting in a, uh, you know, in an airport somewhere. Yes. You could be doing something like this, what Brian Priest did. He was out in Mapleton, and he was just taking great pictures like this. These deer, look, looks like a pretty good worn path those deer have been uh, using right there. And then we had Scott Taylor with his drone. He shot this. This is at the Great Salt Lake Marina, and you can tell it's very festive there as the boats are kind of done up with their own decorations. But as we look at our headlines, like I said, it is going to be a little boring. We do have those clouds and the haze that's going to be remaining. That's what we're going to have in our area. But a little light mountain snow, just very light, but we've got a warmer Christmas. It's not a white Christmas. It's a warmer Christmas, and sometimes you just got to be happy with that. Stormy week is coming. So if you want white stuff, well, just wait a little after Christmas. That's when things are on sale anyway. So what we've got is we've got right now a little bit of storming going on. Again, this is mostly in the mountains. It's the only time we're really going to see that in northern Utah. And then maybe a little storm coming. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But low temperatures, the good news is these aren't that low compared to what we had most of the week. In fact, if we look at what's going on in St. George, look, that red, that is the normal temperatures this time of year. Way above. Look at that 41 on Tuesday. And here in Salt Lake City, same sort of thing is going on. We're going to be above our normals, and that's got to be real good news for the people who are having a hard time this year. And as we look at our future forecast, we're going to see what's going on. We're going to see some storms coming in. I want that white Christmas. Well, let's see if it's going to happen here. We've got a little bit of snow Saturday morning. That's what's going to go on tomorrow morning as we work our way through this. And then, oh, here comes the storm. That's midnight. This is Christmas morning and pretty much just moving its way off is all it's really going to be doing. And next storm is going to be coming through. But this is where we get the big stuff coming through. By the time we get into Tuesday, look at this rain, snow mixed throughout. That'll continue through this uh, most of that northern part of the state into a little bit of that. But then Wednesday, we bring the southern part of the state into the action and they are involved as well. Wednesday is going to be a big day where we're going to see a lot of storminess across the entire state. Clears away, but then Friday, well, looks like another storm is making its way in. That chance for precipitation coming on Christmas Day, very slight. But when I say slight, you know, it, it is that, that thing of just a chance. That's all we really want. Our regional forecast, we can take a look. It's going to be 20s, 30s through most of the state as we get into the overnight lows. And then it's going to be pretty nice going into our day on Saturday. But take a look at our six day four, seven day forecast. You can see that that snow, uh, that uh, storm that I told you about coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's what's going to be taking care of southern Utah. We're going to see the same sort of thing play out along the Wasatch Front as we're going to see a nice warm Christmas. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, storms coming in. So enjoy the warm weather while you got it. And then we got to buckle up for the storm coming. Yeah.